Hello folks, welcome to Ginger Lions, a modded Minecraft Let's Play. I'm going to be playing the Agrarian Skies mod map again tonight. Um, I want to show you a couple of things that I've got going on. I found myself running out of power um, out in the rest of my system. So what I did is I attached a Tesseract up here to output power to the rest of my network. And it's running these dynamos at maximum capacity to keep everything out there loaded. So, I think I'm just going to change tactics a little bit tonight. Oh, by the way, I wanted to point out that I had... Wow, is the power really flickering to my system? Yeah, it is. So I'm going to have to disable this Tesseract for a minute while my AE system comes back up to full charge. Yes. That's much better. Um, so, clearly, I have myself a power problem today. And rather than just continuing to run these and, and switch over to bioreactor power, I'm going to take advantage of one of the new mods included, which is the big reactor setup. So I want to show you what I need to do to get there. First, I need steel in a lot of these recipes. You'll notice graphite bar and steel are what I need to make the reactor casing and yellorium ingots. All things we've never seen before. The yellorium ingot is made by smelting this dust, which is made out of sulfur, which I've been getting from pulverizing coal and pulverized tin. Relatively simple. So that one's an easy one to make. The graphite bar is made by smelting coal or charcoal. And since charcoal is easier for me, that's what I'm going to be working with. Um, and the steel? Well, for steel we have to delve into another mod. We need to go into Tinker's Steelworks. So, I'm cooking up a whole bunch of clay here, and I'll show you why in just a minute. First, I need to come in here and grab myself some charcoal. And I'm going to take two stacks of it out here and toss it in my furnace. I'm actually going to toss it in the hopper above my furnace, which will allow me to have graphite bars moderately soon. The clay is kind of important, so I'm going to let it continue cooking up. And I'm going to come over here and look for bricks. And I need these, and in the total, I need a grand total of 64 bricks of this, of this format. So, let's see how close I can get. 62. There's 63. And one more, and I have the 64 I need. Now, let me go show you how to get started with Tinker's Steel. The first thing that you need to make utilizes this, and you take it and you pour seared stone over it, getting yourself scorched bricks. Scorched bricks are one of the basic components of making a Tinker's Steelworks steel forge. So, what I've done... I actually, this, these 17 blocks of seared stone, are the result of 4 stacks plus 50 stone. And what I'm going to do is, in each case, I'm going to put... Oh, I need to go get myself my spout. I clearly need to make another terminal out there. Let's see. I think... I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. I want a crafting terminal, which I happen to know starts like this. I need glass. So, I've got plenty of sand. And this furnace is now free. So let's use it to make some glass. Meanwhile, I need to make this. Do I have the ingredients? I do. Now, this terminal I can make. This crafting table I can make. 
How about this storage cell? Yep. So now I have myself a crafting terminal. Which I can plug in out here and keep myself from having to walk in and out of this building, which I've had to do about a hundred times in the last half hour. So, there. Another terminal out here. So, what was I looking for? Ah, yes. My seared faucet. Actually, I might as well grab both of them. Because I'm going to use them both. And I'll show you why. First, I need to get this out of here. And then I need to get that out of there. All that can go back in the network for the moment. And I need... Fourteen bricks. Actually, I need sixteen to use up all of the stone that I have in my smelter. So what you do, this is very similar to anyone who's ever worked with the Tinker's process. You pour the seared stone over these two items. And you get scorched brick and scorched bricks which are necessary components. So, I'm going to spend just a couple of minutes over here making scorched brick and scorched bricks, and I'll be right back once I'm done making that stack. Looks like I miscalculated slightly. There's still some seared in there, so I'm going to dump it off into this here tank. It won't make plates out of it. Just make myself some seared stone, and this last basin worth I'm going to destroy. So... There's that. Now, what I need to make is one high oven controller and one scorched drain. And let me take this and this, because I'm going to use them. Actually, just for safety's sake, let's grab myself some more sand. So, let me show you how to build the Tinker's Steelworks oven. I'm actually going to build it back a little bit further than usual. Okay. Now, let me hit F7 for lighting purposes, and go get myself some torches, because I'm going to want torches on the top of this. The things you forget until you're staring at it and going, I should have done blank. So, that's what we're going to do. First, very much like when you're building a smeltery, you need a bottom like so. The difference is, this doesn't expand outwards the way its smelter does. It continues just like this. And I'm going to put the controller one more level up, and I'm going to put it over on this side. Might as well just put the controller down right now. And I'd like my drain right here. Now, if you build this just one tall, I could seal this top right here and it would accept it would smelt one unit of steel at a time but you all know me that's not my style i could build it up to here and that would make two three four five Or six. Six is the maximum. There's no reason to go above that. The system won't actually smelt any more than six at a time. So I'm going to build myself a little bit of a sand ladder. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to put some torches up here. I don't see any X's indicating a problem, but nonetheless. Now... I'm correct, and I come over here, 
this has turned itself into a steel oven, just like I wanted it to. So, now I need the ingredients that I'm going to work with. So let's see, I need sand, I need gunpowder. Let me put this seared stone in here, I have no use for it. I need redstone. And... Let's see, I need charcoal, but I need it in block form. So I'm going to ask for a stack of this. And I need steel. I need iron to make steel out of. Now, I could just smelt the ingots, but each action of the processor would do one ingot. And, well, I'm a little bit more impatient than that. Plus, I figure I should use my equipment efficiently and use my fuel and oxidizer efficiently. So I think... Ah, oh, screw it. I'm going to make a whole stack. Let's make ourselves a whole stack of steel. Now, I want a fluid duct an item duct some servos I've got a lot of servos from tearing it down equipment um, and a chest so I'm going to set this up for automation first, mostly because the system, I want to make sure that I use it as efficiently as possible. So, first we need fluid ducts. I need a fluid duct here, and I need this casting basin directly underneath it. I'd like to set out and put a servo in so that I don't have to apply any signals or worry about any confusion done. Now, I'd like an item duct, so that as soon as that's full, it pulls out into this chest. Again, status ignored, just like that. Now, I'm going to take these iron and evenly spread them out here. Um, I'm going to go grab two more blocks of iron, just so that, again, so that we use everything as efficiently as possible. There we go. Every time this runs through a processing tick, it will use up one of each of those. It will also use up um, gunpowder. That's what's known as an oxidizer. Redstone, which is what's known as a reducing agent, and sand, which is known as a purifying agent. And, it, and if I have everything correct, as soon as I apply a redstone signal, this will turn on. Yeah, those are elevators. I thought they might be iron for a second. I'm going to put that right there and flick the oven on. It immediately begins using up charcoal to raise the temperature. As the temperature climbs, the blocks of steel start to iron, start to warm up, um, and once they reach an appropriate temperature, they will melt and will produce steel. This will use up some of these items in the process. So let's just watch. It's poss Now, my understanding is that the higher the temperature this oven gets, the faster it will do this job. Um, so if you are trying to mass produce a lot, you could continue to feed coal and iron and gunpowder and sand and redstone into here, and eventually it will burn through blocks of iron faster than this fluid duct can pull it out. But for the moment, we're definitely not running anything near that in terms of speed. Less than a third of the way. Okay, I'm going to step off camera, and I'll be back when it's just about ready to tick over that first process. Okay, folks. So, when the temperature kicked over 1,000 degrees centigrade, the numbers turned this orange color. And these, since these are closing in on the top, I just wanted to bring you back on camera so you can watch the process. 
Let's see what it does. It hasn't yet used up any of the necessary ingredients, but it has used up a full block of coal, and looks like... Hmm, 1500 degrees. There. It used up some gunpowder, it used up some redstone, and it used up a bunch of sand. S and, you'll notice it ho made a whole bunch of steel, which is pouring out and already being brought over here. So, just to make sure that this process runs like it needs to, I'm going to take some sand. Eh, three stacks. There we are. That way I can make sure that it doesn't run out of any of the necessary ingredients as it ticks through this process. And as you see, it is now going much, much faster now that it's up to almost 2,000 degrees centigrade. And it's definitely making steel faster than the casting basin can remove it. It's now up into red temperatures. I assume that's actually good. I don't see anything dangerous occurring, and I have not heard that this system will blow up if overheated or anything. Well, let's just keep watching here. We've got 12 blocks of steel already. That pleases me. Keeping everything topped off. I notice that the actual graph seems to be almost completely irrelevant of what's in it. It just seems to show a level of some kind. Notice these are ticking over much faster now. There's four left. glad I went and got more. It looks like I may very well have run out if I had not. See how much faster this oven is operating now? Two more cycles. And there's all of the product used up. So what I'm going to do, because it will continue to keep this oven heated if I leave fuel in it. So I'm going to take all of the necessaries out of it and just let it drain off the fuel, the um, steel that I've produced. I'm pretty sure I need nowhere near the amount of steel that I just produced, but I'd rather have plenty and not have to go through that process again than not have enough and need to. Now... Let me check on my previous processes. Um, I'm actually going to ask this system to make 128 Eulorium, so that is occurring before I need it. And grab these steel, break them down into ingots, and toss them into the system. Now, in preparation for the project that I'm about to do, I did go ahead and add the recipes for the reactor casing, Eulorium dust, Eulorium fuel rods, reactor access ports, reactor glass, and reactor control rods here, and added pulverizing of tin. Looks like I already had that in here. What a silly thing that I did. Put that back in here. Already knew how to pulverize tin. Didn't need to teach the system that. Um, and the cooking of yellorium dust into yellorium ingots. So, all of that is already here in the system. Now, I need to figure out exactly what layout I want my reactor to be in. So, I'm going to take some cobblestone and I think a little bit of hardened clay and go map it out and I'll be right back. 
Okay, so I've mocked my reactor up. It's, um, the dust is unnecessary things because I'm making one-offs of each one. So that's just fine. Now, I need this many glass. However much dirt I end up with in my hand is exactly how much reactor glass I need to make. Let's just make sure I get it all, because I don't want my count to be off, just because I forgot that. Actually, yeah, that's fine. magnet mode for just a moment to make sure that I get all of the things that I need so that I can have my count be correct. Okay, so it looks like 25 pieces of reactor glass are what I need. So let's come over here and request them out of the system. Let's make sure of my number, 25. There's those 25. Separated, easy, and I can put the dirt back. I may need dust again, we shall see. Now, these are reactor plating, or whatever the, the reactor hull is. again. Make sure I get it all. I'm getting better and better at using this pickaxe. Apparently now I'm mastery, uh, expert level, and it just added auto repair. Nice. I was preparing to have to use a little, little bit of manual in up, but that's fine. Okay, so I need 49 of this. It means I need 46 more. 46, please. Seems to have run into a roadblock. Let's go find out what exactly that roadblock is. Unfortunately, I have to go inside. Oh, I asked for control rods. Oops, that was not what I wanted. I made way too many of those, and I'd like to cancel that job, please. Thank you. Well, I know that I have enough control rods now. I needed five. So. Let's turn this off. I want 46 of these. Well, let's, once again, let's go find out what it is that's delaying the build. And see if I can speed it up any. It is missing graphite. Does not surprise me much. I just used quite a lot of it up. And it's going to use a lot of it. So, let's start by splitting up my charcoal blocks. Let's go feed these charcoal blocks into the furnace. Okay, folks. It's going to need to cook up a lot of that charcoal. So, first I'm going to go clear up whatever steel I may have gotten. Let's see what my situation is. This is completely empty. My oven is cooled down, and there's 31 more blocks of steel. Nice. I should not want for steel for a while. And, while this system goes ahead and makes me graphite bars, I'm going to go off camera, because it's kind of boring to watch.
Okay, folks, I'm back. So, I crafted myself a pair of reactor access ports to go with the reactor casing, reactor glass. I made 10 Eulorium fuel rods. I've got my five reactor control rods. Um, I'll show you how all this goes together. I know it's a little complicated at this point. I need one reactor controller, which is going to take four more of these. And I need at least one reactor power tap. So pull that off. And finally, let me see, is there anything else that I really want in this system? You know what? I haven't actually tried, but I'm going to go ahead and make myself a one reactor redstone port. Which theoretically will allow you to help control the reactor via redstone. So now, I'm going to remove these blocks that are still floating in the air. Because I intend this to be a permanent installation, I'm actually going to dig this into the ground. Just one block, or more precisely, one set of half slabs. That's three, and that's five. That's the size that I want my reactor to be. Now, you can build these reactors any size you want. You can design them all sorts of interesting ways. I spent just a little while in a test world trying to decide what I wanted and needed for this environment, and this is what I came up with. Now, it's... I guarantee you nowhere near the most efficient reactor that can be created. I didn't spend a lot of time doing very careful math. I didn't... Generally, I didn't do a huge amount of work. I spent maybe an hour testing how I wanted this to work. So, this is what I produced out of that hour's work. Let's see. First, I need a reactor controller so that I can make decisions about the reactor. I need two reactor access ports. One to put fuel in, and one to take spent fuel out. Uh, I need a reactor power tap. That's to get power out of this reactor. I think I'm actually going to run it to that line over there. So right here makes perfect sense. The only hard and fast rules about this are that your borders must be made of reactor casing and your walls must be made of reactor casing or reactor glass. So, and I haven't used the redstone port at all, so I'm just going to put it in, say, this back corner over here, and we'll see when time comes what it does. Now, I'm going to lay out a pattern right here. These are the fuel rod containers. They basically are going to hold the fuel in this reactor as it operates. Now, I need the corners. Again, the corners have to be reactor casing. And the edges can be made of reactor glass, which allows me to see in, and I think that's a good idea. Corner, edge. Now, before I build up any further, I'm going to go get myself something pretty unusual. I want... These recipes are no longer correct. So I'm going to take them out and clear them so that they don't mess me up. But they are exactly what I want. I need... Nope. Apparently all of my buckets are full. Iron. I need ten buckets. Well, I might as well make a stack. And I need... So, 
reactors inside of them not only are going to have a, a reactant, but you can put blocks inside to cool them down. And I intend to. Now, the most expensive ingredient you can put inside to cool them down is... Resonant Ender, which I actually would like the Tinker, not the Tinker's Construct, the Thermal Expansion version. Hmm. I want the one that uses the Magma Crucible. So, let's go find ourselves the Magma Crucible. And it makes 250 millibuckets per pearl. So, I'm going to need... 20, f let's see, I need 4 per bucket, I need 40 ender pearls. That's easy enough. Thirty-two. That's 40. So, I'm going to take this, I'm going to switch its output mode back to the side, I've actually removed the other one, given the how much power I was trying to save off the network at a period of time. I'm going to put these ten buckets in, and I'm going to start melting ender pearls. Again, that's going to come over here. It's going to fill this up. When it reaches one bucket's worth, it's going to fill a bucket, which is going to get dumped into the system. That's fine. So, when I have 10 buckets of Molten Ender, I will be right back. So, as anyone with the common sense that God gave grass um, would probably be able to figure out, my system, this is the pe most power-hungry thing on my system, using a maximum of 400 RF a tick. So, I just went and stole a little bit of power out of my house. So... I'm going to grab these seven buckets. Oh, there's eight. Let's see, how long is it going to take for the next two? This is about ready. There's one. We've got four more to melt. That's fine. I'm actually going to wait until I have all of them. That's all of those. That's all of that. And... Last two buckets. So, these are used, like I said, for coolant. This will allow the reactor to run much more efficiently by not overheating instantly. So, I've decided on a, a pattern that's going to use five buckets of Molten Ender per level in each of the spots around the edge here. Molten Ender isn't cheap, both in terms of power and in terms of materials, but I happen to have it, and so better to use it in this way uh, and have a reactor that's much more efficient and makes me much happier power-wise than just to let it sit over there and know that I have it for some other day. Right now is the day that I want it. So, we fill this in like so. And I'm going to put in the corners before I get too far. Now, I don't want to fall into that Molten Enderium. Uh, for anyone who hasn't played with Molten Resonant Ender, it will teleport you. Oop, I missed a spot. Clearly, I have one too many buckets, and I missed the middle location. That's easy. Whoa, did you see that? That teleport that just happened? That's because I put my Molten Ender... Hmm... You know what? I may have designed this reactor differently than the one that I made in test. Well, that's okay. Looks like I've got two more buckets of Ender than I actually needed. And luckily, the place that I was teleported to actually had land on it, instead of being teleported over there into the void. It's possible. So, like I was just saying, be extremely careful when you're working with buckets of Molten Ender. Um...
Now, I'm going to seal this reactor up. But, one of the things that you have to do, whenever you've made a column, vertical column, of Eulorium fuel rods, at the top you have to put a reactor control rod. That allows you to control how active that is. Now, when you put the last piece in place, it should form these pretty borders and thus tell you that your reactor is ready for you to troubleshoot it or work with it or make power out of it. Now, I'm going to go steal from my house the Tesseract that I just shut up, set up because I don't want it to continue to drain power out of my house because I can almost guarantee you, yes, my system is running out of power already and I don't like that. So, now my AE system will should charge back up once this fills up, which is a little bit of a ways from done. Wow. Okay. Well, that's going to take a little bit. It should be okay. Hopefully I won't need my system during a period of time where it's completely powered down. Let's start by putting back in the things that I don't need right now. And grab myself some cable, a, I want a precision export bus. Will you make me one? You will. Thank you. And an import bus. The import bus can be very basic in nature. Okay, now I put my reactor controls and access over here on the side, so I'm going to dig down right here and run myself some cable over to my network. Yes, this is all necessary before I can pull power out of this reactor. Hmm. There's, ah, there is the easiest place for me to get power out of. And I'm being kind of touchy in this neighborhood because I happen to know that there's a sludge boiler running under the ground somewhere here. And getting close to it will give me poison and hunger effects, which I don't really want right now. So, now, let's go ahead and run this cable up. Now, I'm going to set this as an, uh, sorry, let me remove that, there, as outlet mode. What this will do is cause this to turn blue, and it will send out spent fuel. And I can then import that into my network. And this is my precision export bus, and I will connect this, and it's going to be set in move single items and craft mode. And I'm going to go ahead and put the floor back in place. I'm actually going to use my builder's wand to do it because it's so much easier. There we are. All neat and tidy. Looks like my system has stabilized somewhat. Good. Now, I want... Eulorium, please. And I'm actually going to tell the system to craft 256 more. Not that it's going to need it immediately, but it's going to need it at some point. Because we're about to begin using that Eulorium as fuel. So, you're going to export Eulorium. And as soon as it does so, you'll notice yellow begin to appear in the centers there. Eulorium is being pulled in. It's filling up the core. And we now have a max capacity filled core. At the moment, it's at zero degrees Celsius. It's at zero core heat. And it's outputting zero power. So, what would I like to do with it? Well, I have here this Tesseract. And... This red zone energy conduit, I'm actually going to use the red stone energy conduit, not the tesseract today. 
I want to pull power out of, that's the reactor power tap. I almost touch you about breaking torches. You never quite know when that's going to bite you. I'll put one right here and one right here. Now, it is connected to my network, power-wise. And I've yet to... F so let's see. Toggle reactor on and off. Input, change control rod insertion, input eject waste, output. So theoretically, I could set this to output when the energy reaches a certain amount, and then set another input so that the, um, the reactor shut down when its core power got too high. I will probably do that, but I'm not going to do it right now. What I want to do right now is turn on my reactor and see what it does. So it looks like, all by itself, it makes 3,300 redstone flux per tick and stabilizes at about 1,360 degrees. Now, when I checked my network, I came to the conclusion that I use just about 2,000 redstone flux per tick on average. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and set these to 30%, just to see how that works. What this does is reduces the effectiveness of the reactor, it also reduces the temperature of the reactor, and it reduces how much fuel the reactor uses. This is sort of your way of controlling the reactor over and above just building it. So, it looks like it's Filling up still, energy buffer-wise, it's 2,700, and the temperature hasn't dropped enough. So I'm going to run those up to 50%. Let's see how that works. Now, the lower the core temperature of your reactor... In fact, let me show you. The reactor itself tells you. When you hover your mouse over casing heat, it says heat of the reactor's casing. High heat raises energy output and coolant conversion. This says heat of the reactor's fuel. High heat raises fuel usage. Now, so because I've used a high quality coolant, um, which is the, the uh, molten ender, it's transferring quite a lot of that heat to the casing. Now I'm running just over 2K. My reactor is still making slightly more power than I am using... So, I'm going to use my system, and th I know of a good, good way of making sure that this doesn't, that this doesn't turn out to be a problem for me. First, let's turn this back on, and I would like a resonant energy cell. I actually have one in the house. So, what I'm going to do, being a little bit of a tricky sort, I'm going to grab myself some tesseracts. And I'm going to use them in sort of the opposite way as I have been for the last little while. First, I'm going to come down to the basement and steal this energy cell. Then, I'm going to put a tesseract here and I'm going to put it on mains, and I'm going to set it to send and receive power. Let me just make sure it took. Good. Now, I'm going to connect this Tesseract to this output line and set it to send and receive power and do nothing with any of the rest of this. So now, there's power being sent to my base when there's excess out here, and there's power being sucked out here when there's not. And finally, I'm going to take this resonant energy cell 
and I'm going to attach it to this. Now, what's my my face is here, so that's my back. Actually, I'm going to shut all of this off, and I'm going to input from here and output from there. There we go. I'm actually going to change this just a little bit. There. In fact, I'm going to change this to... You know what? I'm going to change it to send a power only. Now, it's sending power into the house. And this is powering the rest of my system. And because I'm really tired of the booming noises that these gunpowder generators create, I'm going to shut them off. And at some point, not too long from now, they will run out of fuel, and all will be well on that front. So, finally, I wish to come over here. Mm, I didn't set... I should have set this up right. I didn't quite set it up right yet. You'll excuse me if I have to tear it down one more time. I would like this to be... Hmm. So now, if I'm correct... Right now, since it's not receiving a redstone signal, this reactor should be off. Good. Now, I'm going to plug this tesseract. You know, I'm going to make sure I have it facing the right way. I'm going to put this tesseract in right there. Did I get it facing the right way? Let me find out. I did. So now, it should be set to let's shut off the input completely good it's now outputting there now I want this set to hmm I thought I could set this to output a redstone signal. I guess. I can't. Nope. I guess I was wrong. So, the best I can do is set it up so that this reactor runs, for the moment, filling this energy cell um, and thus outputting out to the network. I would like the back to be blue. front to be orange, all is well. So, reset. So, at some point soon, I'm going to figure out how to set this reactor to shut itself off when it's full of power and turn itself back on when it's dropped below a certain amount of power and I haven't figured that out yet but nonetheless so I have this set up to export fuel rods into here I have it set up to import spent fuel when it comes out and at the moment it looks like we're 0.8 percent depleted on our first load of fuel uh, and I now have developed myself a way of powering my entire base off of Eulorium. I hope you enjoyed the episode, folks. I will see you next time. So, I figured out a control methodology that works. So, if you'll notice this is turning on and turning off, what I've set it to do is turn on 
if it drops below 96% full and to turn off if it gets above 96% full. So the machine toggles on and off every 10 seconds or so. Let me show you exactly how I did that. I used some red net cable. The recipe for red net cable is like so. Eight of it from just some plastic sheets and some redstone. Um, and I connected them here. I did have to use a precision sledgehammer to force it not to connect to that cable. That's fine. Oops, I did not want that to happen. Let's remove that. Okay, let me get this stuff out of my hand so I don't mess up anything else. What I have this set to is active while below 96%. That means that if the reactor has less than 96% energy in it, E, O, there we go. If the reactor's energy level is below 96%, it's going to emit a redstone signal. I put in a second rec reactor port and set it to enable disable set from signal. What that means is if it receives a signal, it'll turn on. If it doesn't receive a signal, it'll turn off. In this way, I have this set up so that it's toggling on and off, on for long enough to push up what gave 96%. It shuts off right there. The energy slowly drains out and it turns back on. I'm toggling back and forth basically over a 1% neighborhood. This causes the reactor heat to oscillate wildly and the amount of power produced to oscillate wildly. But it allows me to save quite a lot in terms of fuel, and it keeps my efficiency very high. So, I wanted you guys to see that. I also uh, set this, this redstone energy uh, cell is acting as a bit of a buffer, making sure that everything continues to get lots of power, despite the wild oscillations of the power production device itself. So, there we are. We're back to operating on Eulorium. Um and I am did come over here and break this cable, like I said, in hopes that those will shut down moderately soon and I can tear that whole thing back down. So, anyway, have a good one, folks.